Hello friends, and welcome to my new video in which I will tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is Crazy Mom Decided to Play a Prank. This was one of my final calls as a police officer before I was gravely hurt in an incident that eventually forced me to retire. I was a police officer in a small town, and my beat was mostly the rural area and the county highway that runs through the town. There were only five or six policemen on duty at any given time, and we were individually responsible for covering a large area. I'm conducting speed enforcement on a sunny, clear afternoon when my radio crackles to life with information about a possible kidnapping in progress. The dispatcher then goes on to describe the make and model of the car, along with the information on the driver, a woman with short blonde hair. I go to my computer to check if any more information has been provided about this, and sure enough, the call log has additional information stating that the RP, reporting party, has reported that a small child is sitting in the hatchback section of the car with a sign that reads, Help! I've been kidnapped! Their hands looked like they were bound together, saying, Call 911. Even though the call is within our jurisdiction, they are not in my immediate vicinity. Therefore, at this time, the only thing I can do is assist the other cops and sheriff deputies who are now searching for the vehicle. The next 10 minutes pass in silence, with everyone acting appropriately and driving the speed limit until my radio starts to crackle again. We are receiving another call about the alleged kidnapping, and they are now traveling south on County Highway 123. My heart begins to race as I realize that the car is approaching me and should arrive any moment. Three additional calls come in while I'm waiting for the call dispatcher. These people are other drivers who saw the little child holding up the help. I've been kidnapped sign and reported it to 911. Due to the flat nature of this section of the highway, I can see cars for miles, especially when using Binos. Sure enough, the van approaches and as it passes me, I can make out the female driver who fits the description provided by the RPs and the child who is leaning against the hatchback area's sidewall. I hesitate to leave only in case this is a real kidnapping. I don't want to startle the driver and start a fast-moving pursuit. Not to add that I'm all alone and you want to have a good amount of backup in case they decide to flee, shoot it out, or do anything else. I therefore wait until she is at least a mile or two away at which point I pull over and follow her until I can obtain some support. Fortunately, there is a highway patrol barracks nearby, and they responded to my request for help. As soon as we passed the road leading to the barracks, I noticed four trooper vehicles pulling out behind me. I decided to fall back and let the troopers take the lead, since if this became a chase, they would already be prepared. As we position ourselves to halt the van, we discuss our plan of action. Will we conduct a full criminal stop? Or will we merely pull the driver out of the car and carry out a soft traffic stop that functions like a normal traffic stop? We made the decision to execute a complete felony stop, so we dispersed throughout all four lanes of traffic, simultaneously turning on our lights and sounding our sirens. Instead of pulling over in the breakdown lane on the side of the road, the female driver slams on the brakes and comes to a stop in the middle of the road. We all set up our cars to provide the best possible coverage in the event of a shootout, and when the female driver exits the car, we order her to get out as well. But when she screams, it's a freaking joke, we should have known something is wrong. She keeps walking backward until we tell her to stop and lay down on the ground, and even though we're not really interested in what she has to say at the moment, she complies and gets put in handcuffs. The female driver's 13-year-old daughter was the next passenger we focused on, but we couldn't see her face at the time. Nevertheless, we told her to turn around, get down, and put her in handcuffs. We repeated this process with the other four passengers who were occupying the four seats in the back of the van. After removing all deemed threats from the car and making sure it was safe, two troopers walked up to clear the car while I and another trooper pulled the crying little child out of the hatchback and placed him in the back of one of our cars to protect him from his alleged kidnappers. The driver and the female passengers in front continued saying, It's a joke. He's my brother or son during the entire ride. It's unbelievable, guys. 
We begin investigating the matter after making sure everyone is safely in their respective cars. We start that by speaking with the little child, who has now been more compliant after the female trooper gave him a toy dinosaur and some food, and then she started asking him questions. At that point, we discovered that the entire incident was the cruel joke that the female driver and her daughter had cooked up since the van was full, and they chose to place the little child in the hatchback. They thought it would be humorous to put up a sign that said, Help! I've been kidnapped! Then ask the small child to hold it up while another person in the vehicle videotaped other drivers' responses. After they read the placard, they must have been doing it all day because they weren't discovered until they got to this place. We were told to kick the four teenagers in the back loose without charging them, to write the teenage daughter the juvenile equivalent of a ticket for inducing panic, and last but not least, to save the best for mom after speaking with the other passengers, all of whom were under the age of 16, and learning that it was primarily the mother and teen daughter's idea. When I told the mother to stay in the car and I opened the back door so I could speak with her, she immediately began to get out. Why? I need to sign the ticket you're about to give me, so don't you think I should be free of the handcuffs? She lost it and began yelling repeatedly. When I told her that it wasn't quite that simple, and that she would be charged with multiple felonies rather than just a simple ticket. Oh, F joke, that is. I can't believe that jokes are no longer funny. It way is very cool. Now uncuff me or I'll sue you for unlawful detention with my husband. I read her the Miranda warning while she began to cry, but not shedding any tears, I may add, and muttered that it was a F joke. I asked her whether she would be willing to speak with me once I had completed giving her the Miranda warning. When the husband and father arrived on the scene to pick up their children and the vehicle and were informed of the circumstances, all he could do was shake his head and remark, This isn't the first time she's done stupid crap like this. It's just the first time she's been caught. I've warned her in the past not to do it because I knew it would end up in a situation like this. I returned to a quiet afternoon of catching speeders when the transfer van arrived and took her away after approximately 10 minutes. The woman operating the vehicle was accused of seven misdemeanor counts of inciting panic and six felonies counts of child endangerment, one count for each child she had in the car. The reason the charges were felonies was because the woman's actions endangered the lives of her children by making us perform a felony stop in response to a practical joke. One count of having an unrestrained child, she chose to place her six-year-old boy in the van's hatchback since there wasn't enough room up front. Nonetheless, none of those kids should have been back there. Instead, I'd prefer one of the older kids. Why? Since the other boys wouldn't have felt comfortable back there due to their height. Initially, it looked like a serious situation with a possible kidnapping, and you responded with great care and professionalism. But it turned out that it was just a joke. I hope that after this situation, she will reconsider her sense of humor and change it. It is pathetic that children were drawn into this absurd situation, and it is hard to imagine how such a joke can be funny to anyone, especially when children are endangered. The mother's reaction, her aggressive words and claims, show an ill-considered and irresponsible approach to such humor. It is simply unbelievable how such a thing could come to this mother's mind. The mother was charged for all these actions, and she deserved it. Your job as a police officer requires patience and determination, and unfortunately sometimes you are faced with unexpected and absurd situations like this one. I wish you continued success and safety in your work. The next story is, we don't care if you're not part of the HOA. Last spring, I moved into a little cottage on the outskirts of town that was my ideal house. I loved that the house was located just outside the boundaries of the Neighborhood Homeowners Association. I had no idea that this seemingly unimportant detail would set off a conflict that would permanently alter my life. It began rather casually. One Saturday morning, two stern-looking people claiming to be from the Sunnyside Estates HOA knocked on my door. They gave me a list of infractions that included anything from my purportedly messy yard to the color of my mailbox. I requested them to go after kindly letting them know that I wasn't a member of their association. They would not go away, telling me I was wrong. 
I refused to back down and gave them property records to back up my argument. Although their faces turned red, I believed they had fled. I started receiving daily alerts in my mailbox during the next three weeks. The fines followed. I chose to disregard them all, confident that I was unaffected by them. However, the HOA wasn't done. A number of HOA board members marched onto my property one evening as I was sitting on my porch enjoying myself. I had to follow their regulations, or else I would be punished, said their commander, a woman with an extremely well-groomed face and pinched hair. She pulled out her phone and contacted 911 when I instructed them to leave my property, and I refused. It was unbelievable to me. I was being called by the police because I was protecting my own land. I swiftly opened my phone's property records and started filming the interaction as distant sirens sounded. When the cops arrived, it was obvious they were irritated to be summoned for such a small issue. The board members of the HOA gloatedly related their story, anticipating my removal. Rather, the cops heard my side of the story, looked over my documentation, and told the HOA that they were intruding. However, this was only the start. I jumped into research, determined to fight back. I learned that the Homeowners Association has been coercing residents into complying with this ruse with other non-member properties. Equipped with this understanding, I contacted my neighbors and a nearby investigative journalist. As word spread about our tale, additional victims came forward. We banded together and filed a lawsuit accusing the HOA of fraud, abuse of authority, and harassment. The case took off and garnered widespread interest. During the trial, startling information came to light. The HOA board had been embezzling money and hiding their trails with coercion. The evidence against them grew, and their house of cards fell. The judge's decision to decide in our favor and dissolve the HOA as a whole was a stunning turn of events. Due to their personal liability for the damages, the board members had to perform community service and pay heavy fines. For their financial transgressions, several even faced criminal prosecution. To make a communal garden on my property available to all neighbors, whether or not they are members of the HOA, I utilized my portion of the settlement. It came to represent harmony and a reminder that sticking up for what's right might occasionally result in beneficial change for the community as a whole. We have all learned a great lesson from the Sunnyside Estates fiasco about the perils of unbridled authority and the value of being aware of our rights. Now, when I sit on my porch, I see a neighborhood devoid of arbitrary laws and unified by respect for one another. The best retaliation is sometimes to live a good life and support others in doing the same. The next story is Funko Liars and Karen Encounters. I was in a F everything attitude after a hard day, so yeah, anxiety is a powerful drive. Despite my true desire to merely groove to my music, I enjoy lending a helpful hand to others, particularly those who don't get Funko, Lego, or comics. I've always been good at it. In fact, several high school instructors used to ask me for insights into what their students were requesting for Christmas. Furthermore, it wasn't a teacher's pet because my teachers would talk to other students in the school, not my teachers. First, a little background. This happened on a Saturday about 2 p.m. last year. I had just finished my early morning shift at work, and it was almost Christmas. This woman, standing in the Funko aisle, looked very bewildered. She was being told different things by her child, but she was clueless. I aided her after asking if she needed anything, and then I walked away. After helping a few other parents in the Lego area, I returned and heard that humph of a Karen. Karen, pardon me. There was nobody else in the area, so I knew she was speaking to me. Karen, hello, I really need help. Me, the ever classic, I don't work here, lady, and I don't like it when people treat me like an idiot. I would never talk like way to you or anybody else. Karen cries. I'm sorry. She's better now, but I knew she couldn't contain herself for long, so I offered assistance because I knew I would likely enjoy the result in the end, and I did. Such and such figure is what I was searching for. I seem to recall that it was a Harry Potter variation, and it cost $20. Me. Well, 
Since it's exclusive, that will probably cost $20. There is another non-exclusive one here shows, though. Karen scoffs and laughs. No, I was curious about the cost of this one. S-E-E-T-H-I-S-O-N-E-A-E-R-E, -E -E -E, slow for no apparent reason. Me, $20. That is the whole cost. Karen laughs, scoffs more angrily. No, she really lost it. Haha, <laughs> not your price. I want the store's price. I'm not going to buy your BS. When I finally got it, I burst out laughing. An employee of the store came over at this point and gave me the go-ahead to leave Karen's tantrum quietly. But when the woman pointed to the tag and told her the store's pricing, I was unable to flee. She was enraged as Smaug. Karen to Karen, I am entitled in that Smaug voice. I have rights. Karen said, no, no, oh, this is his price tag to the worker who happened to be the manager. Like this is some kind of shady pawn shop or something. This employee wants to sell me his sh to the manager. How do you feel? Me trying not to laugh. No, I helped a few people who were in need since I like helping people in general. And then she came up. She believed I was trying to sell her this figure when I informed her of the pricing and variations amongst the figures. However, I'm not. Gandalfa wasn't in Harry Potter. He was a variety of Harry Potter. Therefore, I don't even truly know him. Not Harry Potter, but Lotter the Hobbit, which I know just for fun. Karen gave me a gaze as if she wanted to dust me with Thanos. Manager, hmm, are you carrying the figure? Could I look into your purse, please? That was okay with me. Then Karen came in and said, No, he's right there. Pointing to a shelf figure. Manager. Karen. Based on what I heard you yelling at him, he is correct. Not his. This is the shop price. Furthermore, some individuals are really attempting to be kind and helpful. Me. Laughing quietly and happily. Karen. I'm sorry, but the best is still to come. I apologize to the management, not to you. Karen seizes the figure and turns to go. The manager nudges me away, and we have a brief conversation. Manager, you seem to help people here quite a bit. Since many of us are unaware of this information, we all truly appreciate it. However, I would like to know why we should communicate with Karen. Why exactly? I clarify that I have encountered Karen previously because we both frequently visit the strip mall where the store is situated. Employees here, as well as at pretty much every other store in that vicinity, have heard her crap talk. I further clarify that, while I embrace pacifist principles, I detest bullying. My grumpy smile takes over when I see Karen's now. I went to the grocery store in hopes of running into Karen again. I was prepared for a meltdown, a how-dare-you-speak-to-your-elders-this-way kind of thing. I should note that she was by no means an elder, as she appeared to be in her late twenties or early thirties, while I am in my early twenties. She saw me, though. She trailed me into the dollar store and continued to follow me, calling me a Funko Liar repeatedly. I laughed all throughout the shop. She continued yelling, Funko Liar Liar Liar, and hiding around the corner every time I moved into a different aisle. People are starting to take attention at this point, and my shoulders are literally bouncing. When Karen sees this, she understands something. She had been calling me a Funko liar for 45 F minutes. Everyone, even the workers she has previously denigrated, was able to view her. Yeah. I was laughing at everything, having noticed. Karen laughs. Okay, so the Harry Potter remark was a little offensive, but this is how it all came together. Upon observing her, the dollar store's manager approached her and said, DS manager, Miss... You are the one who has consistently made fun of my staff, and now you're yelling at a customer? You must depart right away, the untamed. When Karen realized I was laughing like a schoolgirl, she hurriedly left. She was never seen by me again. The DS manager was an anomaly. I thought she might scold me in the grocery store, but I never would have imagined this happening. And that's when the DS manager turned to look at me, the laughing toddler. DS, how are you doing? It appears to be a new response to a B-teach yelling match. The DS employees and management were ecstatic when I gave them a brief explanation of what had happened. She hadn't entered, but it seemed like they had been planning to ban her for a while. 
She hasn't returned when I visit, and I still see the personnel there. And while I admit that occasionally I get annoyed by mispronouncing words or characters, I wish I had stood up to Karen because she really hit me with a F everything moment. LOL. Additionally, I know that I could have handled this better, but I also knew that someone else would have taken advantage of her, and I know how difficult the holidays can be for retail employees. It all kind of fell into place. Do I act like a soul? Most likely. I'll proudly accept that. I'm going to walk into the sunset as one of Karen's holes. Edit. Is there still a Toys R Us? The Canadian side was able to establish themselves alone when the American side closed. I talked about this with a manager friend of mine at another business. When the American side reopened, they kind of merged again, but they are still seen as one, even though one is superior than the other. Update. Since I'm from Canada, as I've mentioned in the comments as well as here, Toys R Us is still around here. However, since they raised their pricing in December and February of this year, I've stopped coming as frequently, even though I still have a lot more Karen stories from stores. But yes, I have confronted Ken and entitled P slash families in addition to Karen's, and a large portion of them were great Canadians. Since I use public transportation, I have witnessed a lot of bad things happen. Your knowledge of Funko, Lego, and comic book figures has been an incredible asset to many immature parents and customers looking for gifts, and it's great that people love to help others. That's what Karen does. But she got a different response. You not only made your point, but you made the whole store laugh. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment. See you soon.